In this task, we will open, review, and interpret the CAPA report generated in task two. So I'm going to use my text editor to open the created CAPA report to view, to view it. So I'm going to go to my lab directory and I'm going to right click on CAPA report and edit Notepad++. You can open it in whatever editor you choose. So let's talk about this CAPA report. The first section, which is the five lines in our case here, display the header information identifying the title, the location, the date, any mass that we had applied, and input maps for the CAPA analysis. The second section, which are lines 7 through 24 in our case, so all these lines here, display the error message between map 1, which was identified as the AA sites raster here, and map 2, which is specified as the ML permanent raster here. So let's consider this error matrix for a moment. The columns are the reference data, the uh, which is the supervised classification we did by hand, while the rows are predicted classifications, which are the classifications done by the computer. So, for example, if we look at the category 1 column, it reports that 168 cells were classified as category 1 when they were category 1, so that means it actually was classified correctly. However, one cell was classified as category 2 when it was in fact category 1, so that means it was classified incorrectly. Additionally, 42 cells were classified as category 4 when they were actually category 1 cells. If we sum the diagonal, so 168 plus 44 plus 271 plus 42 plus 30, there we go, we get 555 which represents the number of cells that were classified correctly. If we sum the uh, call sum row, we get 900, which represents the total number of reference cells. So those are the cells that are all considered to be correctly classified. So if we divide the number of cells classified correctly by the number of reference cells, we get 555 divided by 900, which equals 6.166 which represents a 61.66 accuracy rating of the unsupervised classification. And this is re and reported in lines 36 and 37. So let's scroll that down here. There you go. Essentially, this is the overall accuracy measure from the CAPA report. Now if we just stopped reading the report at the observation percentage section, we would be missing an important section that will explain where the classification is getting poor results. If we understand where the classification is getting confused, we can, perhaps, improve our training data to improve the overall accuracy. So let's observe the error statistics section of our report. So that's lines 26 to 34, right here. And let's consider the percent commission column. So that's the second column here. The percent commission reports what percentage of each class was confused with another class. So in other words, misclassification percentage. So for example, class four, which as you remember represents a forest, was confused with other classes 87.31% of the time. And that's significant. So if we refer back to the error matrix section of the report and look at column two for category, uh, look at the column for category two for map one, so that's this one here, 247 cells were mistakenly classified as class four when they were actually class two. So 247 cells are classified as forest when they were actually classified, or when they were actually uh, the water class, that would be class two. So compared to the other classes, this percentage down here is really, really high, which really probably explains the large percentage of our classification error. The percent omission column, that's this one here, reports what percentage of each class was mistakenly classified as the wrong class. So think of this column as the opposite case from the percent commission column. For each category row, 
percent commission reports how many cells were placed into its class incorrectly, whereas percent omission reports how many cells were not placed into its class correctly, uh, i.e. placed incorrectly in other classes. The third column represents the estimated kappa coefficient. The kappa coefficient is a statistical measure of agreement between the two different classifiers of the same data, so in our case, how well the training data set and the supervised classification agreed in their classifications. The kappa coefficient takes into account uh, to the agreement of the classification versus the possibility that the agreement is just from sheer chance, so that it would be when both classifiers are just randomly guessing the classes. If the classifiers completely agree on all classifications, then the kappa would equal 1. If the classifiers do not agree other than what would be expected by sheer chance, then the kappa would equal 0. So in our case, the kappa coefficient is reported as 0.525067 in line 34 of the report. This could be considered a moderate amount of agreement between the two classifiers. However, there is no universally agreed upon range of values that would consider a kappa coefficient to be excellent, good, moderate, poor, or otherwise. Now, therefore, when reviewing the kappa coefficient, you should also wholly consider the report when determining whether the classification is acceptable enough for your purposes. The remaining section of the report, so lines 39 through 51, displays the category descriptions as provided in the raster maps.